Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Pete with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button um, and check out my other videos. If you've uh, checked out a couple of my videos before and this is your third or fourth video that you're looking at, thank you so much for painting with me and thanks for getting creative. I really am proud of you. In today's painting, you're gonna paint this really cute dog and you're gonna get a lot of comfort with make, mixing your paint to make your colors and also layering your paint on the canvas. We're gonna go through at least two layers to kind of get a bit more of an opaque coverage and give a little bit more depth, depth um, as we paint the fur. So it's gonna be a lot of fun for you. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular video, for this particular painting. So gather the supplies that you need, pick up the video where you left off, and then move into painting. Another thing you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my beginner painters to get their initial composition on their canvas before you even start painting. And it kind of takes away some of that beginning stress of trying to get your composition on there. You're also gonna see a video, a link down there for a video on how to transfer your traceable with carbon paper. So check out both of those, um, get your image on your canvas and then pick up the video where you left off to move on. Um, when you are done painting and you're kind of ready to take your skills to the next level, I want you to check out my Paint Your Pet class on my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And the Paint Your Pet class is geared towards first time and beginner painters. And you will be working from an actual photograph of your pet. So you'll learn how to crop the photo, transfer it to your canvas. You'll learn how to mix the colors specific to your animal, to your pet. And you'll go through the process, which is a really simplified step-by-step -step process. And I've been teaching this to people over the last seven years. Um, and all my students come in kind of scared but by the time they're done, they are so impressed with themselves with what they created with my simple steps. So please check that out when you're ready to take your skills to the next level. All right, and as always, make sure you have fun, relax, enjoy the process of painting. It's just paint, it's not the end of the world, and you will be a little more relaxed at the end of your painting process, maybe compared to right now. So enjoy it, have fun, and I think that's enough talking, let's get into painting. All right guys, this is gonna be a fun painting. So head on over to where you have all your supplies set up, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So for this painting to start off with, after you have transferred your traceable to your canvas, you've got two options here. You can either use a pointy brush and black paint and go over all those lines on your traceable. Um, let's do it again. Or if you're short on time, you can actually go over it with a Sharpie marker. Um, and again, that just kind of solidifies your composition on there before you start painting. I highly recommend doing option number one just because it is good practice for you to get comfortable with the pressure of your brush and um, doing the outlines. We will paint over some of the outlines um, so these don't have to be perfect. It is good practice. I do recommend letting the paint, the black paint dry before you move into your background and we're going to make a sage color. So I want you to start with the yellow and add a tiny amount of black to it. Um, and a little bit of black goes a long way. And then we're gonna add white to it to kind of tone it down. And your shade of sage may be a little different than what I'm doing on the screen. That's totally okay. But once you've kind of got your desired color, we're gonna be going from the edges of those lines to the edges of our canvas. And because this is a fluffy Pomeranian, um, we are gonna overlap some of those perimeter hairlines with our background. And by doing this, um, our background will be dry by the time we get into the fur colors and our fur will overlap the background colors. So with acrylic paint, you can layer and blend colors um, very nicely. So, all right, so again, we're going from the edges of those paint lines or the edges of those black lines to the edges of the canvas. 
And if you are one of my beginner painters and you realize you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale. It's gonna be okay. Um, the background's a lot of fun to paint and it's a good place for us to warm up um, for the painting process. If you're also using student grade paint, um, I do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker. You'll have a little better coverage. And when we do some blending in a minute, um, it'll make it a little bit easier for you. And if you have to mix your color two, three, four, five times, um, like I have in the video, don't stress about getting the exact same color each time. Having some variety is to your benefit um, for painting. So here we're actually adding a bit more black to our mixture and we're putting this underneath our dog and imagining that this is kind of a shadow and you're placing it right on top of your background color. This is called wet on wet blending. And then once you place that new color on top of your background color, using light pressure, just move your brush back and forth to kind of mix it in. And then you're gonna clean your brush. We're gonna do the same thing, but I'm using white and just literally slapping it right on top of the background color. And then again, with that light pressure, just moving my brush back and forth on top of it and playing. If you feel like doing this and finger painting, go right ahead and do that. Sometimes it is really nice just to get in there and get dirty and, and feel the paint on your hands. All right, and here I'm grabbing a bit more of that black. I'm gonna do the same thing right underneath those paws, light pressure and just blending it into the base paint underneath. If you happen to go over the legs of the dog or kind of go over the butt, that's okay. We will paint over that later. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna be using black paint and the small pointy brush. And we're gonna start with our dark shades first and kind of work backwards to our lighter colors. So here we're taking that black paint, we're filling in that whole gum line, the whole smile on our little Pomeranian dog. And again, if you go outside the lines here, do not freak out, do not stress. Once you're done filling in that gum line, we're gonna start adding um, just a few more details around the eyes. So all I want you to do is observe where I'm placing these colors and the shape that I'm making as I place them. And then I want you to do, to the best of your ability, uh, just kind of recreate that on your canvas. So now we're making a dark gray and that was white with black or actually pull some black aside and add a touch of white to it. And we're gonna fill in the nose of our dog and we're gonna do a little bit more with the eyeliner with our dark gray. And we're doing our dark colors first before we move into our tan colors. So now making a medium gray, you can see that I just took some more white and mixed it um, on the perimeter of my dark gray. And again, we're going two or three shades lighter than what the dark gray was. And you can see where I placed it right above the nose and again, if you need to pause the video to see where that was placed, go right ahead and do that. And then we gave them a little bit of a mustache and then we're doing a little bit more eyeliner with the medium gray. And again, these tan dogs just have, you know, such a dark kind of nose, mouth and eyes and then the rest of their fur is tan. So we're just getting our dark spaces in first. All right. Now we're moving into burnt sienna and black, and it's about a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, now we're gonna start moving into the brown fur, and again, starting with the dark spaces first and working backwards. So if you realize you maybe grabbed too much black, just grab more of that burnt sienna and do the same thing. Do a perimeter mixing next to the darker uh, space, and you can kind of adjust your color. So with that black and burnt sienna, we're just going over the eye, um, this is the color of the eye. You can see that the black pupil is still there and I did leave that light, that white little jelly bean looking shape. Um, it is called the catch light. If you happen to paint over this, do not freak out. You can always reapply that white dot at the end of the painting. Um, basically anything today, if you paint something in the wrong area or paint something you don't like, don't freak out. Um, you can just let it dry and apply a new color on top of it. So acrylic paint is a very forgiving medium for my beginner and first time painters. So again, you're just observing the places where I'm putting this color and I want you to mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. And again, remember to breathe, 
I'm really proud of you for painting at home. It does take a lot of courage to paint at home. You're doing great. And you're learning to see something that you love from a new perspective today, or you're learning a new skill. So either way, be kind to yourself and enjoy the process. For this particular painting, we will do two layers. We're gonna fill in the, all of our space and get to what we call an underpainting. And then we're gonna repeat the process all over again. All right, so another good spot to pause the video and take your progress photo. Now we're gonna move into just the direct burnt sienna. And again, you're just observing the place of where I put it. Um, and we'll be putting quite a few um, uh, spaces with this. So I did move back up to the medium flat brush. Um, but again, you're just gonna observe the place where I'm putting it, mimic that shape on your canvas, and then move on to the next phase. And again, I am using student grade paint, so it is on the transparent side. And you've got a couple options. You can either apply it thicker, or we're actually gonna do two rounds of these colors. So this is getting you kind of comfortable with looking at spaces and shapes, and then comfortable with layering your acrylic paint. And again, if you're holding your breath, take a big inhale, you're doing a great job. Hopefully while you're painting this, you kind of forget about the rest of the world for a little bit. That generally is the reason why most people paint. Just kind of takes you out of your day for a little bit. All right, and as far as brush strokes, we're basically making little dots. When we move into the longer hair, we'll be making little dash marks and kind of moving the brush in the direction of the fur. But again, be kind to yourself as you are in the beginning stages of painting. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna step down to our next color. So clean your brush out really good. We're gonna be doing a mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. And we're going for this about a one-to-one -one ratio. And again, this is student grade paint, so it is on the transparent side, but you do wanna notice a bit of a color shift. Um, so now we're with that medium flat brush and I am holding it kind of sideways and making little dash marks. So I'm moving the brush in the direction that the fur would be going. And again, if you have to mix your color a second or third time, does not have to be the exact same shade or value each time. Just come within range and then we will be doing a second coat on top of this and making this dog a bit more um, opaque in the coverage and a little more solid. And again, you're just observing the place of where I am placing this color and where it's coming up next to the other darker color from the prior step. If it is still wet and you can do a little bit of blending between the two colors, go right ahead and play with that. Um, like I said, when we do our second layer on here, uh, it will give us a bit more of that opaque coverage and we can do a little bit more blending, uh, visual blending. All right, so again, using that mixture, moving the brush in the direction of the fur and just starting to get some of these layers on here and get rid of that white canvas space. You're doing a great job. It is pretty cool when you go back and look at your progress photos. It's very satisfying to see a white canvas transform into your final image. All right, so now we're moving in with just raw sienna, filling in another large portion of our dog, our brown dog here. And again, if you overlap another area, don't freak out about it. go the face is looking cute I actually when I paint um, I don't feel like I have begun a painting until I've gotten the first layer on there and gotten rid of all the white canvas space so again looking back at those progress photos it's kind of cool to just see how it changes as we dwindle away the white canvas space 
And again, I'm holding that brush sideways, imagining each brush stroke is a strand of fur and kind of moving it in the direction the fur would be going. This is just kind of good to keep in your brain. It keeps your brain occupied a little bit. I don't want you thinking too much. Um, and when we start to overanalyze the painting process and get too much of it in our, in our head, you don't enjoy the process nearly as much. And a lot of times people will quit before they've even finished a painting. So be kind to yourself, go through the full process. You're doing a great job. So moving down another color, we're moving into light raw sienna. So we're taking that raw sienna plus white. And the white usually makes it a little bit thicker, a little bit creamier, a little more opaque coverage. So it'll be a little different than using the raw sienna by itself. Um, and especially depending on what brand of paint you're using, they do vary from brand to brand. And basically with this lighter raw sienna color, we're basically filling in the remaining space, the chest of the dog, uh, maybe a few spots on top of the head, and then we'll move into our other, basically repeating all of these steps again, but you're doing a great job. All right, our dog's taking shape nicely. And again, if you have to we're actually going to make it a little bit lighter, so that mixture you were just using, add more white to it. Just go in one phase lighter, and as you're looking at the dog, um, we have one, two, three, four, five different shades on there. Starting with our darkest being the black, working down to our lightest being that super light raw sienna that you're applying right now. And here you can see that I am overlapping it on a few other shades of the brown. Uh, we'll be getting into doing more of that in a moment, but this is where you can layer acrylic paint over and over and over again. All right, so now moving back to the pointy brush, just going into small little areas. Pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna clean that pointy brush and we're gonna move into painting the tongue. So it's gonna be a light pink. So white with a tiny, tiny amount of red. A little bit of red goes a long way to make your shade of pink. And we are going for a light pink. And if yours is lighter or darker than what I'm putting on screen, totally okay. All right, so wipe the brush off. We're gonna add a little more red to our mixture to go just a touch darker. And we're gonna give a bit of a shadow um, on the tongue, making one more dark area. There we go. And then that darker mixture, add a tiny amount of black to it. We're going for a grayish pink. And we're gonna be placing that at the back of the tongue. because we're imagining that there's a shadow happening as the tongue goes back into the mouth. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're going to move right back into um, our dark spaces. So we're starting back with the burnt sienna in black. And we're going to apply our round two on top of this. All right. So again, I am using that middle flat brush, holding it sideways and making little dash marks. Again, imagining that each dash mark is a strand of fur and that they're overlapping each other and moving in the direction that the fur would grow. And you're painting right on top of what you already put on there, and it should be dry by the time you're moving into this step. And notice just how much thicker, how much more opaque it's actually um, covering. So as you paint more and more, don't be afraid to layer your paint. It does change it a lot. Um, and it usually, we're a little more satisfied with more of that opaqueness and fullness happening. All right, you're doing a good job and you're strengthening your power of observation 
And this is something that you could paint multiple times and you'll learn something new each time that you paint. And that really should be the basis for painting. Try not to compare yourself to other people and just compare to maybe what you painted the last time that you painted. Um, and just try to do a little bit better from that. Um, really, each person's gonna have different set of circumstances and goals and things that they wanna accomplish, so be kind to yourself. All right, so now we're moving into just the direct straight burnt sienna and reapplying it. And again, where it may overlap the darker color, the color you were just using, feel free to do a slight amount of blending while the paint is wet next to each other. And you can kind of soften that transition between the two colors. If you need to, I am sticking with that middle size brush. If you need to, you can swap down to that pointy brush or a different brush if you're painting on a huge canvas and you need a bigger brush. Um, but adjust what you need based on what you see me doing on screen. All right, so now we're moving into just that direct raw sienna. So you'll clean your brush, straight raw sienna, and just building from those dark colors, moving lighter. Still keeping that brush sideways and making dash marks. And as you start getting to the perimeter to where the fur would be overlapping the background, go right ahead and overlap the background. Now, as we move into kind of doing all of these fur strokes, and we're gonna be putting quite a few layers on there, I do want you covering up a lot of those black lines that you see. So if you need to apply your paint thicker, and something else that you may notice is you might start getting a lot of buildup on your brush. Um, every now and then, if you start realizing that your brush strokes are whiter and bigger, um, maybe wipe off excess paint on your brush grab fresh paint and then start reapplying again. So the more that you paint, you're kind of getting comfortable with what to expect from your tools, how to manage your tools, um, and just, you know, your groove of working with what you have. And here I am with the small pointy brush. So as you're doing some of these lines and as we move from here to the end of the painting, play with the pressure of your brush, especially when you're doing the hair that's gonna be overlapping the background light pressure is gonna create some smaller, skinnier lines where a little more pressure will create fatter and whiter lines. And this is something that with practice, you get better and more comfortable. So if this is one of your first paintings um, and you're having some frustration making some of the skinnier lines or the wispy lines, just know that it does get better the more that you paint. Each time you paint, your brain's taking in a lot of information of what it looks like to have this color next to another color, what it looks like to mix this color next to another color or with another color. Um, but your brain's taking in a lot of information right now and processing. So a lot of stuff that you're learning in this painting, the next time that you go to paint will make even more sense. So this is a compounding knowledge uh, practice, the creative arts. So don't just do one and then think that's it. You know, get in the groove and find creative outlets on a regular basis for yourself. All right, and if you need to, here you can see I um, grabbed a angled brush. I'm not quite sure if you could see the tips of the brush, um, but it, it's kind of a flat edge with a bit of an angle. And for my longer haired animals, um, it works really nicely because you can kind of get into the groove of making those fur marks. If you do not have an angled brush, a flat brush works just the same. Um, if you do have an angled brush, give it a try. If you have a fan brush, you can use it in the same manner. Just hold it sideways. But just try different tools and find your comfort level with each one, which means you have to paint on a regular basis. <laughs> And again, if you're holding your breath, take a big inhale. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. You're doing a great job. Keep going. And when you are ready to paint from your own photograph of your pet, check out my Paint Your Pet class on my website. Um, I'll put you through a very similar process of what we're doing for this bit video. But when you paint something that you love, you actually put more energy into it you're going to learn a little bit more and you're willing to kind of push yourself um, 
maybe outside your comfort zone a little bit more and learn something new. But that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters and working from your own photograph, I show you how to crop it, how to transfer to the canvas, and then how to look at it and look at your shades and your values. All right, so still with that raw sienna, just making all those brush strokes, moving in the direction of the fur, overlapping some other colors, and it's coming, taking shape very nicely. All right, guys, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna be moving into a lighter raw sienna with a touch of yellow to it. So we're starting with that raw sienna, add a touch of yellow to it, and then if you need to, we're gonna add a touch of white to it as well. And that little bit of yellow just kind of warms up the color, and we're making it a little bit lighter so we can have um, some nice contrast from the kind of mid-tone raw sienna that we were just applying. So still holding that brush sideways and imagining that each brush stroke is like a strand of fur on our dog and we're overlapping and breaking up the space from the raw sienna that's underneath it. And if you need to, if you start realizing that your brush strokes just get whiter and whiter and whiter, um, feel free to wipe off any of that excess paint, grab more paint, and then go back into your mark making. And with this lighter color, like I said, it's just breaking up the space. It's adding to the fluff and the fullness of our dog. You're doing a great job. And with this, I want you to kind of keep that light pressure as you were on the perimeter and some of these brush strokes are overlapping the background from the dog. And again, this gets easier and more comfortable with more and more practice. If you have to mix that color a second or third time, don't stress about the exact same shade. Um, we are just basically going lighter than the raw sienna so that way we have um, some depth and more dense fur that we're creating. And again, if you are inclined to kind of put this lighter color somewhere on your painting that I do not, uh, to help break up that space, I want you to trust your instincts and go ahead and do that. Um, as you are getting close to those edges of your lines, uh, or the, ed the perimeter of your dog, oh, let's try that again, cut that. And again, as you paint today, you are just observing the placement that I am putting each specific color and just come close to putting um, that color on your painting based on your observation. And the more that you observe um, artwork, the more that you create, the more that you're building that knowledge in your head and making it easier for your painting process. So be kind to yourself, um, especially as you're in your beginning stages and learning and taking on a lot of information. You're doing a great job. And remember to get out of your chair, look at your painting from a distance of four and five feet away, and just notice how it looks a little bit different. Maybe it looks a little bit better from that distance. And if you notice something from that distance and you want to, are inclined to change something or put a color somewhere, please go ahead and do that. So now taking that light color and the small pointy brush and adding some highlights, some light sources, around the face of our dog. And these, as we're on the face of the dog, are smaller little brush strokes, more like dots, compared to the longer dash marks for the body of this Pomeranian. And at any point, if you do need to pause the video to observe where I place something a little bit more, please go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're moving down to white and raw sienna. Again, just going even lighter and if your shade's a little bit uh, different than mine, I want you going two or three shades light lighter than the shade that you were just using. So we do want a bit more contrast. And if that means that you're using pure white on yours, then you're using pure white, but go two to three shades lighter than the color you were just using. 
and it is pretty cool how this kind of more contrast light color really makes things kind of pop even more than the color we were just using. So half of art is just observing how you look at things, how colors interact with each other, what it means to you. Are you observing more? Are you observing less? Does it feel good? So art has all of those things involved with it. That's why there should be no judgment in art. It's more about the process of creation and the process of painting. And again, if you need to move down to a pointy brush, if you need to switch between a couple of brushes, use what works for you. You're doing great. Remember to breathe. You may realize that you're holding your breath as you go to touch the canvas. Um, that is not going to help you. And if you are noticing that your hand's kind of shaky, if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, it's going to alleviate um, some of that shakiness and it gets you breathing a little bit more. So you're doing better than you might be giving yourself credit for, so be kind to yourself. This is coming along very nicely. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna clean the brush really good. We'll still be using that pointy brush and I'm gonna move back to raw sienna and just add a few extra little colors. And again, if you're inclined to put a color somewhere that I do not, as we get into these final stages of the painting, trusting your instincts is a little bit more important than doing exactly what I do. So if you've got a space on your canvas that you're inclined to put a color or it needs it, go right ahead and do that. So I did go back to the white and raw sienna and breaking up that space on the butt of my Pomeranian. And I am allowing some of that color to shine through from underneath as I put those lighter colors. Now we're moving back to just that raw sienna and going back on top of some of the lighter colors that we were doing and again, breaking up that space, adding more depth, allowing space in between the brush strokes. Um, and this just helps kind of build that fluff. And you'll notice as you paint more, it is a lot of a back and forth. Maybe you're gonna add some shadows, then you go back and add some light colors, then you go back and add some shadows. Uh, painting is a conversation between you, your subject matter, and your painting. That's why there is not an exact formula for how it should actually be done because each person is going to have a different interpretation of what they're doing. So now moving back to an even darker color, the raw sienna and burnt sienna, and going back to where there should be some shadow elements. Um, the butt would be in a bit more of a shadow and just applying a little bit more to those paws. And I do want you, if you've been taking progress photos, I want you to go back and look at each of your photos. And I want you to start assessing how you look at things differently as that white canvas space is dwindling or as you're putting more layers on your canvas. All right, so now we're moving back to the black paint and we're going back to the eyes. So I am using that small pointy brush and light pressure. We're gonna redo the eyeliner. Uh, we're gonna re-outline the nose and we will um, add more black on that pupil to kind of intensify it. And by doing this, it kind of cleans up some of the lines and this eyeliner just immediately drew more attention to the eyes. Same as we do it on the, around the perimeter of the nose, it just kind of cleans up um, the shape and draws our uh, eyes attention to it a little bit more. So as you're doing these small lines, treat your brush kind of like a pencil using just the tip and light pressure. Again, this gets easier with more practice. Then if you need to, we're gonna clean up that gum line. So if you've had any of your fur colors overlap into that black gum line, this just kind of cleans them up and makes it a little more visually appealing. Remember to breathe. You're doing great. And 
And if you want, you can outline those paws. You could even go back and do those um, the outlines that we did from the traceable if you want a bit more of a pop art feel. If you don't want to do the black outlines, you do not have to. Completely optional. Right in here and just kind of outlining the bottom of, or the top of his lips, the chin on our dog. And that just kind of helps set the tongue back into the mouth space. And now going back and applying that black right on top of the pupil. If you happen to go over that white dot, that white catch light, don't freak out. Um, let that black paint dry and then you can reapply that white catch light um, again. And you can reference the traceable or you can reference the video for where it's at. So here I'm actually grabbing that raw sienna and going right over the eyes again to kind of intensify that color. Again, if you go over that white dot, um, it's okay. Let your paint dry and reapply that white dot. If you want to change the color of your dog's eyes on this one, you are more than welcome to do that. All right, going back to the raw sienna, a few other little spots that I would just wanted to break up the space around the face. Again, completely optional. If you like your fur right now, you can skip this step. Um, but if you feel like you need to do a little more visual blending and bring it back to a specific color, by all means, trust your instincts and move with that. This guy's coming along really nice. I love his happy little smile. Um, really proud of you guys for painting at home and just taking time out of your day to hang out with me. You're doing awesome. And that yellow and raw sienna mixture, again, it's just kind of warm and just put it in general places of where you see me putting it or in a place that you're inclined uh, based on your instincts. All right, so going back to that black, I'm just gonna reshape some eyeliner and that pupil again, uh, just cause I kinda went over it with those other colors. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me and painting. You did an excellent, excellent job. When you are ready to paint your own pet from your photograph, check out my Paint Your Pet class on Paint with Lovejoy. And until next time, I look forward to painting with you. Have a great day. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really cool and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting a dog. Um, when you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy or hashtag Paint with Lovejoy or email them to me. It truly is through your feedback, your photographs, your response, your encouragement that continues to make this channel go um, and gives me inspiration to create more. So let me know how you're doing at home. 
Also, feel free to leave a comment if you want me to paint something specific in the future, or if you have any comments or questions. I do try to check those twice a day and re respond to all the comments on YouTube. So thanks so much for painting with me today. I'm honored you took time out of your day to spend it with me, and I'm so proud of you for painting at home. Keep up the good work, and until next time, cheers. Yeah.